One of the things you'll be hearing so much about with the Ocean Race is the foils on the Amoka. Well, we're on the water today doing speed runs with Team Militia, and Will Harris has offered to take us down below and have a look at exactly how you get the foil out and pulling. We're on board with Team Militia today. Talk me through what we are doing today out here on the water, because it's not proper race day, but what's going on? So today is the Pro-Am Racing. Mm -hmm. It's where we get to bring some uh, guests to uh, experience the day on the water and experience <laughs> a bit of the boat, and hopefully to do a bit of foiling as well. Um, so what we're doing now is we're setting up the boat, we're getting everything ready to find the best settings. In, in terms of sort of like standard stuff, winches, winch handle, okay, a pedestal, but with all this new technology and the foils and all the rest of it, how how difficult is it for somebody who's done some killboat sailing to come onto a boat like this? How long did it take you to kind of grapple with it? Yeah, so I mean, I've been sailing our mockers for the last five or six years now. I think what I've really seen in the development of kind of my sailing and also how our mockers have changed is the amount of data you really have to understand. It's, you know, always looking at the numbers. I think it's really about understanding how the foils is kind of like another sail. It's really, okay. you're really adjusting it like it would be a sail. You've got to trim them effectively. You've got these two controls of the extension and you've got the rake as well. And, and rather than kind of looking at the shape of the sail or the profile of the foil, you're looking at the numbers of the data to say, okay, this is how fast I'm going. This is how close to the edge I am. And, and this is sort of the settings that I need to be adjusting it to. Right, so Boris just asked for the foil to go out, port foil. Yeah. Just yeah. explain to me what, what's, what's going on here. So we basically have an up and a down line. Yep. The up line is here, this blue one, and this is the down line. Yeah. And uh, this is holding uh, the full load of the foil, so about nine tons. They're very strong bits of rope. And then, as Roman is pointing out here, you have the foil extension here. Right. Um, so we're going to be on starboard tack, so we're going to be pulling out the port foil. So this holds the full load, nine tons you were saying, when that, when that foil, the foil is foil down is, yeah. and loaded and pull it. Exactly. Which, which is why, what's that, 12 mil? Yeah, that's uh, uh, 14, no, this is 12 mil. 12, and all these other ones are like 10. Yeah, yeah. You've got some eights in the your much, right? much, much thinner. This is our first control of the foil is the extension, how much we're we actually going to put it out of the boat. So it's not just out and in, there are different levels. Uh, exactly, yeah. It's. Right. Uh, we're playing between 50 and 100% of the foil, basically. Why? Why, why, why is that? Why would you um, want more? Why would you want less? So you want more for more riding moment and more power, right. and you want less when it start, things start to get a bit hairy and a bit full on. Oh, okay. And so just like reefing the mainsail. Exactly, yeah. You can just reduce the amount of foil you have. You can reduce the amount of foil power. Exactly, yeah. So the extension right. is the biggest control. So, okay. um, so I take it off the lock, and then what we do is we wind this. Yep. We can do this very easily when the foil isn't loaded. Yep. But when we're sailing along and we're trying to do it quickly, it becomes a lot harder because uh, it's just right. Well, right. Well, hence why we're loaded. doing it now before the race has started. Exactly. Yeah, you're okay. trying to save save energy, but obviously when you're going fast, you don't want to slow down much. So yeah. you end up having to put more work into it. Yeah. Do you want me on the pumps? Because just yeah, looking at that sideways pull that you're doing there. And so, so this is me pulling it out. Exactly. So you can see the extension slowly okay. increasing there. So we're 15 percent there. I know it's the way you said slowly, which yeah. means hurry up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So much quicker. 30 yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay, right about now, I'm starting to really feel it. The further out, obviously, the more drag you have in the water. Right, so good the, to know. The harder 50. it gets, yeah. Ah! So it's it's quick, because at times it's hard, and then it goes easy again. Yeah, that's the foil moving in and out of the water. You know, we're only doing two knots at the moment, so yeah. you imagine you try and do this when you're doing 15, it's very hard. Yeah, I mean, this is my little, yeah. I've, got, I've got easy. Yeah, so I'll just check with the skip. How much extension, 80? So you're 79. And that's 80 there. So now I'm going to release this. So then the next thing we want to do is changing the rake. So we've got the rake here on the port and starboard side. So yep. right now. So, so rake is sort of twist four, four and a half. Yeah, mm, yeah. You, but you've got to think how it affects the tip of the foil. So right. it's like an aeroplane wing. It's like you're, ah, okay, okay, okay. it's almost like. So as it kind of, as you push that inboard end, it, it twists it. Yeah, because the foil is a curved shape. So it actually yeah. affects along different parts of the foil. How it, how it acts are in at the elbow. It's like you say, it's four back. So yep. the shaft doesn't change at all. Yep. But at the tip, which is like this, ah, it's tipping like this. Okay, so it's okay, going to okay. generate more writing moment, more lift. Yeah. Um, and so we, because the wind's filling in so quick, oh, yeah, really we're actually going to bring it down to, um, to, to two or so. So straight a foil is yeah, or, not going to make too much difference. Exactly. Big curl, and obviously it's going to yeah. make a massive difference. It's very, very easy, almost no effort. Right. You only want one person doing this, or you can completely destroy oh. the foil. Oh, I see. Um, and you see the rate there is just dropping down to three. 
Yeah. 2.9, 2.7. Yeah. So it's really small movement that I need to do. And then, and so you've said it, for the wind, you know, Boris is out there, he's got his head out there, he's yeah. judging what the wind's doing, the computer's telling us what the wind's doing. Yeah. You've decided how much forward to put in the water, yeah. how much rake. So we're using it like trimming a sail effectively. Yeah. So the hardest bit is when a gust comes and yeah. the boat starts taking off and you've got too much rake on. Because right. then the boat, that's when you get those shots of the boats leaping out of the water. Because a big factor in how much power the foil is generating is the speed of the boat. Exactly. So if that speed yeah. of the boat changes, you know, the foil is suddenly producing nothing or loads. Exactly, yeah. And that's and that's where the fiber optics come into play. There's five different sensors. Uh, one is the closest in and five is right at the tip. Okay. And um, these numbers will be playing. This is what we're constantly staring at. That's really what we're adjusting the foil based on. You know, we want to push as hard as we can, but to the point where we're not going to risk breaking the foil. And you have, by calculation, by experience, you've got some numbers in mind. With the designers. Good yeah. for your boat, good for your foils. Don't exceed this, and this is the sweet spot. Yeah, it's, it's purely on the, the fiber optics is measuring the deformation in the structure of the foil. Right. And this is from a pure number from a designer. If you bend more than this, then you, you are risking damaging the foil. So if you have the normal percentage load, which is purely normal loading of the foil, yep. and then you have the reverse load, which is acting the opposite direction to what the foil's been designed for. So it's generally much less, but with the waves going in and out, it's like a plane trying to take off the runway like this. You know, it's constantly loading and unloading in the opposite yeah. direction. And with water, that can be, that's our biggest uh, problem. It really affects how you sail the whole boat, I think. You know, we really are trying to adjust the heel and, and adjust everything to how we think the foils will be best. And, you know, the stacking is such an important thing with these foils as well. And, in kind of moving it fore and aft. Oh, the than, trim. So, yeah. yeah, of course, because that's going to create a, a, an effect on your foil angle. Exactly. It's, you know, it's the more weight you get forward, the less kind of bow up motion you get. And so you can kind of fly much more, much more level with this. Um, but I think it's, it's just about experience, you know, and, and I think the more I spent time doing it with the foils and especially sailing on different boats as well, you know, each foil, each boat is completely different and also each foil is completely different. We obviously had to replace our foils just before the start of this race and it's completely different how we sail the boat, completely different. It's, it's unbelievable, it's, um, you know, the, the amount of heel we have to sail with, the trim, the, the extension of the foils, you know, it's, it's about getting used to sailing with these foils to, learn, to then learn how to use each different type and each different set of foil. What you'll find is there'll be moments where you're kind of stuck in the back of a wave and you're trying to accelerate, so then you power the boat up and then the next <laughs> thing you know, you're doing 40 knots down a wave yeah. and you've broken everything. You've unleashed everything. the beast. <laughs> exactly, so it's, it's, you just don't want to jump out of control and you know, have a huge wipeout. It's, but, you know, we're learning. We've seen Team Militia do well in Southern Ocean conditions, but the next legs of this race are going to be very different. And while there's still so much to learn about using the foil correctly in all conditions, we'll have to wait and see who's got the edge, because that's going to decide who wins this edition of the Ocean Race. <laughs>